M, P, and F. Now, we'll find them in any kind of sentences. And the topic of the day is conditional sentences, right? So, let's look at them, right? Number one, um, you tell me the difference in these sentences. I'm writing all three for you. Number one is, if you call him, he will come, right? If you call him, he will come. Number two, number three is um, if you call him, he would come, right? And number three is if you had, if you had, uh -oh, if you had. Called him, he would have come. Right, so these three sentences I've given you. Now, my question to you is what is the difference between first, second, and third? Right? You take a moment and think about it, but let me explain it to you meanwhile. By the way, they're known like first conditional, second conditional, and third conditional, if you look at them. And this one particularly is about something will happen for sure. Meaning, right? You need to look at the meaning first. Meaning is something will happen for sure if a certain condition is fulfilled, right? If you call him, he'll come. That's for sure, right? Um, if you work hard, you'll get through. You'll get good grades. That's for sure. So people do not have a problem with it mostly because it's very easy to understand. But Meaning is something will happen for sure if you if you if certain condition is fulfilled. That is the that's the meaning, right? But right after that, we need to understand the pronunciation. Most of the people do not reach the second or the first one. They just start practicing the form, right? Form is about the rule, right? Like the the subject plus verb plus you know you know that. Right? I'll write it for you, but. Before that, we need these two points too. If you really want to be good at sentence construction, because you're le learning language for multi-purpose, right? You're learning for competition. You're learning language for speaking. You're learning for language for better communication. So we have to have these three elements in any sentences that you practice. Now, talk about the you know, so meaning is done. P, um, you can you can look at for this contracted form. The sentence. If you call him, right? If you call him. Uh, he'll come. So the contract form is here. He'll come, right? So he will be healed. He'll come, right? If you call him, he'll come. So in the sentence, you just have one contraction. I, and I advise most of my learners that do use contracted forms too. He will come. This two becomes one. And like he'll come. He'll come. This way you're practicing speaking naturally, very close to the native like speech pattern. He'll come, right? So if you call him, he'll come. That's the pronunciation part is taken care of here. And form, you know, form is, uh, for this sentence, the form is, can you tell me the form for the sentence? I write it here. Okay, if plus present indefinite plus future indefinite. That's the form part. So this makes your sentence understanding complete, like M, P, and F. Now, let's go to the second one, right? So, let me take care of, let me rub it off for you. Right, now look at the second part. And the second one is, yeah, if, second one is, if you called him, he would come. Could you tell me the meaning for this one? So, look for the meaning first, right? Meaning for second conditional is, something will, it's like this, you know, you know the, result of a uh, probable condition like it's like this it's like unreal imaginary sentence hypothetical kind of here the meaning is um you know the result of probable condition right we know the result of a probable condition that we suppose or imagine suppose or imagine but nothing is happening in reality so we know the result of a imaginary situation or a probable situation which is not happening at all if you like if you if you were a fish if i say if you you were a fish cat would 
eat you. But you are not a fish. You're not a fish, right? You're not a fish. But do I know the result? Yes, cat would eat you. So I, these kind of sentences. What would you do if you became the prime minister? But are you the prime minister? No. But do I know the result? Yes. It's a hypothetical, right? If I were the prime minister, if I became the prime minister, I would change the country. I would bring peace, law and order. Right? So you know the result. But of what? Of the hypothetical situation. That's your second conditional. Right? Use it with care. So that's the meaning, right? Um, it's like unreal, we suppose or imagine. Now, pronunciation in the sentence, if you called him, he would come. So he would, again, right? He'd. He'd come. Remember that pronunciation part depends on sentence to sentence, right? But in this sentence, it's he'd, he'd come. You know that, okay? So P is taking a form, you know? If plus past indefinite plus future indefinite, that's your form. So meaning, hypothetical, imaginary, you know, we, 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 we can imagine the result of a probable condition. Pronunciation, you contacted forms here, and form is past indefinite plus future indefinite. That's your sentence. Done deal. So in this sentence, the speaker, if you call him, he would come. In this sentence, the speaker doesn't want, doesn't expect you to call him. But he knows. He knows that result of a probable condition. Right? So it's different. Here is show. Here is imaginary and suppose. Right? This last one, the meaning is um, two past probabilities. Two past probabilities, one depending on another. If the situation is gone, you can't change it now, right? So the function of the sentence is regret. I mean, why regret? Because it's gone, right? For example, if you had called him, he would have. If you had called him, he would have come, right? But you did not call him. That's why he didn't come. Can you call him now? No, because it was about yesterday. It was about past. So anything which you cannot change or you cannot, you cannot do anything about it now is a sense of regret, right? So the function of the last sentence is the third conditional is regret. Here with me, right? So meaning is um, two past probabilities, one depending on another, right? It's gone. You can't change. That's what it is. So that's your meaning. Uh, look at the P part, pronunciation, right? Um, if you had, so it'll be you'd, if you'd called him, he would have, would have, right? Would, would, would have, would have come. He would have come, right? So that's your M, P, and F taken care of. Form for the last sentence is if plus past, uh, if you had, right? If plus past perfect plus future perfect. That's the form. And most of the learners, they start with form. And that's why they keep doing the translation all their lives. You need to pay attention to the first and second area too, which is M and P, meaning pronunciation and form. Always remember, whether you're learning conditional sentences or you're doing your general sentences and tenses, this rule applies everywhere. Thank you so much for watching.